man, it took me a long time to get around to finally making this video. And it's been a hot minute since I've used Unity, so this video might be a bit scuffed. But anyway, you read the title, Collision Based Ground Checking System, let's go. So I have a scene set up right here with this capsule being a character and this floor being the ground for demonstration. And the very first thing you want to do is select any object, go up above the transform where it says layer and open up this drop down menu and select add layer. And you want to create a ground 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 layer and you want to apply this to every single object that you want the game to consider ground and for you to be able to jump off of and the thing is i actually don't know if this ground checking system would work with a standard character controller but if you're using a rigid body based character controller then this will definitely work but i haven't actually tested whether or not this would work with a character controller so for now we're just gonna add a rigid body and freeze its x and z rotations so the capsule stand up stands upright and next up we want to create a new c sharp script and i'm just gonna call this tutorial and you want to apply this script to the capsule and then open it up once opened up we're going to delete the two starting methods and the very first thing we want to do is create a list of colliders call it ground touch points and instantiate it and what we're going to do is take this list and fill it up with every single collider that our feet are touching. And once we want to jump, we're going to check whether or not this list is empty. And if it's not, then we can jump. So to fill this list, we're going to use two methods. One is on collision stay and the other is on collision exit. So we're going to use on collision exit to remove stuff and on collision stay to add stuff to it. Now why on collision stay and not on collision enter? That's because when you have a situation where you are standing on the ground and hugging the wall, so you're touching the wall as well, and the wall and the ground are the same object and it has a mesh collider on it, and then you jump, on collision exit doesn't get called because you're still touching the wall so you technically never ever left the collider. So the collider doesn't get removed from the list and thus the game still thinks you're on the ground. So to counter this we're gonna use on collision stay and check for every frame whether or not your feet are still touching the ground. So on collision stay gets called for every frame for every collider you're touching. So in here I'm gonna create a list of contact points call it contact points and equals new list contact points and this list is going to contain all the contact points that we have with the collider for which this on collision stay was called so to fill this list we're going to create an integer call it number of contacts and this will equal to collision dot get contacts and pass in the contact points list so what this does is it fills up this list with every single contact point with the collider for which this on collision stay was called and it also returns the amount of collisions that we have with it now why that's important is because by default when we pass in a list into this function it returns a list with 64 items. But if we only have, let's say, two contact points with the collider, there's gonna be 62 empty spaces in the list. So when we do a for each cycle for it, it's just gonna read 62 empty spaces and crash, or at least it's gonna try. So what we're gonna do is cycle through this with a for loop and only cycle through it number of contacts times. So if there is only two contact points, we're only gonna look at the first two items in the list. 
So I'm going to create a collider variable, call it collider equals collision dot collider. And this is just so we can call collider instead of collision collider every time we want to access this variable. And here's where we're going to check a couple things. First of all, we're going to check whether or not what we're touching is ground and is marked with the ground layer. And we're also going to check a certain angle. So we don't want to be able to jump off like an 85 degree angle surface. So for that, I'm going to create a function that returns a float and call it rounded normal vector angle and you'll see in a second why and this is going to take in two variables a vector 3 call it normal and an unassigned integer called decimal accuracy so I'm just going to write out the piece of code and then explain what's going on. So create an integer, call it accuracy equals mathf dot pow 10 to the power of decimal accuracy. And we have to cast this to an integer. And then this is going to return mathf dot round to int and then here vector three dot angle normal and vector three dot up and then in here divided by accuracy sorry no multiplied by accuracy and then outside divided by accuracy. So this might be a lot to take in for now, but I'm going to try and explain this. So we're going to pass in the normal of the surface that we're standing on, and it's going to calculate the angle between vector 3 dot up and its normal so we can look at its steepness. Then it's going to multiply it by this accuracy value that I'm going to explain in a second then round it to an integer and after that divide it by the accuracy. So what this is, is we can pass in a decimal accuracy, which then will be converted to 10 to the power of decimal accuracy. And what that basically does is if we pass in like a number like three, it's only going to take three decimal places of the angle. Because when I first tested the system, and I wasn't doing this rounding, even when I was standing on a perfectly 45 degree angle and the system was set to a limit of 45 degrees, it would still return values like 45.000001 and so on. So I had to clamp the accuracy a little bit with this system. So this just takes a look at the more reasonable decimal values. So up here in the if statement, we're going to say rounded normal vector angle and pass in the contact points i dot normal and also a decimal accuracy. And we're going to say less than or equal to 45. So we passed in the normal of the current contact point that we're looking at and clamped the, ve the decimal values to three. So it's only going to look at three decimal places. And then it's going to check whether or not that's less than or equal to 45 degrees. And if it is, we're going to add that collider to the list. But first, we also have to check whether or not it is ground that we're standing on. And for this, we're going to create another function. This time it's going to return a bool and say compare compare layer index and this is going to be very weird so this is going to take in a transform call it transform and a layer mask call it layer so this is going to return mathf.pow 
and 2 to the power of transform.gameObject.layer equals layer. This is super scuffed and super retarded and I don't know why it works this way but let me explain. So when you create a layer mask, it's indicated with a number. In this case, ground is indicated as 8. And when you extract a layer index from a game object, it returns as that number. But when you have a layer mask variable, it will return as 2 to the power of that number. So to compare these layers, we have to take 2 to the power of the layer we extracted from the game object and compare that with the layer variable that we're gonna create later. So instead of this layer variable being eight, it would be 256. And I, I have no idea why it works this way, but this is the workaround that I found. So up here, we're gonna create a layer mask and call it ground mask, I guess. And we want to be able to access this through the inspector and for that most people would actually just make it public but actually what you can do instead is keep your variables private and just say serialize field in brackets in front of it and it will remain private while still being able to access it through the inspector. Where is it? It didn't refresh. There you go, now it's refreshed, and here we want to check, I mean select, the ground layer. And in the if statement we want to say compare layer index and pass in the collision.transform and the ground mask. Additionally, we also want to check whether or not the ground touch points list contains this collider and if it doesn't then we can add it to the list so we don't want to keep adding it multiple times so we have to check whether or not it's actually already in the list and if it's not then say ground touch points dot add collider so then here we want to say else if and here we're gonna check whether or not our feet are still touching the ground, and if they're not, then remove it from the list. So for this, we're gonna create another function that returns a boolean, and I'm gonna call this is still touching ground. And this is gonna take in a list of contact points. Call it contact points and an integer number of contacts. So these are going to be the same list. We're going to pass in this list and the number of contacts and we're going to iterate through them with a for cycle. Number of contacts times. And here we're going to say if and just copy this same piece of code in there and say if it's true then return true and otherwise outside of the for cycle return false. So this is just basically going to go through every single contact point that we still have with the collider and if it can find even just one contact point that we're touching with our feet, it's going to return true. And if it can't find anything, it's going to return false. So in here, we're going to say is still touching ground and pass in the contact points list and the number of contacts and say if it's false. So if we're not touching the ground and also check whether or not the ground touch points dot contains, so whether or not the list contains the collider, 
and this time it has to be true up here it was false here it has to be true and if it contains it so we have to check whether or not it's in the list so if it's not not in the list then we can't remove it and say ground touch points dot remove collider so that's it for on collision stay so now let's move on to on collision exit which will be a lot simpler so in here we're just gonna create another collider variable called collider equals collision dot collider and say if ground touch points dot contains collider then ground touch points dot remove collider so basically on collision exit gets called when you leave a collider completely so no other checks need to be made because you're not touching that collider in any way anymore so you can just remove it from the list so up here we're just gonna create a rigid body variable called rb and we're gonna do the same thing say serialize field so we can access it in the inspector and in the update function we're going to check for a jump input so if oops if input dot get key down key code dot Space and ground touch points dot count is greater than zero then we're gonna make the character jump so basically here we're just checking for a jump input and also whether or not the ground touch points list is empty so in here say rb dot add force say vector 3 dot up times 5 and force mode dot velocity change so this is just going to change the velocity of the rigid body upwards by 5 units so the code is pretty much done so now we can go ahead and check it so if we go into play mode and i press space oops we haven't applied the rigid body so just drag in the rigid body into this slot right here and now if we check play mode when i press space we can jump but when i keep pressing space we can't jump while we're in the air and we can check for the angle if it goes up to 45 degrees and we check that we can still jump on a 45 degree angle but as soon as it goes above 45 I'm pressing space and I can't jump so that's pretty much all there is to it I'm sorry this video was so scuffed but I hope it still helped so if it did leave a like subscribe for more and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.